All right, so the next and last uh, talk of the day is from our third gold sponsor, which is TII. And we have um, Everton De Matos, who's um, the lead of uh, the, the lead security research engineer for TII. And again, who's going to present the vision for TII, in particular the security center, and their views for SEL4. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, uh, my name is Everton. I work as a researcher at uh, TII in Abu Dhabi. And uh, the idea for this talk is also to present a bit of uh, TII, what we do, uh, what we are, <laughs> and also our ongoing projects and uh, how SL4 fits in this project is how we are researching and working with SL4 and some visions for the, the future as well. So, uh, basically, uh, as I said, TII is based on the UAE in Abu Dhabi. Uh, and uh, TII is under the ATRC, the Advanced uh, Technology Research Council. And uh, this ATRC it has three arms one for program, program development, other for applied research, that is the TII, and the third for uh, commercialization. So uh, basically, the idea of TII is to uh, foster or to help in the growing of the UAE research and development industry, and uh, changing this, uh, the spectrum of the, the whole country, not changing, but uh, helping in growing the knowledge-based economy and the technology-based economy, and be a bit away, being a bit away or dis distancing from the, just the oil-based economy. So the, the country as itself has these this motivations from the past years. And the TII was created more or less three years ago with this, this aspiration and uh, have been growing fast. Uh, so within TII, we have uh, some uh, priority sectors. Basically, healthcare, sustainability, food and agriculture, aerospace, security and defense, and transportation. Uh, TII has 10 research centers, all of those listed above, in different, uh, below in different areas. We have, uh, just to name a few, research centers in advanced materials, biotech, quantum computing. We have like different uh, research centers. The whole TII comprises around of 1,000 employees in the UAE. And uh, of course, we have those uh, 10 research centers. So this, this quantity of 1,000 employees is divided by those uh, 10 research centers. And uh, the one that uh, uh, I make part is the security systems. So now some more letters, the SSRC, that is the Security Systems Research Center. So basically, this is the story behind the TII and the, the research centers that we have. Uh, we have some uh, partnerships with different universities because we do mainly applied research and then uh, we have those partnerships with uh, universities around the world, including uh, the University of New South Wales that we have a project ongoing on the CL4. And uh, the idea with this, we have like our researchers located in Abu Dhabi, but uh, also uh, we have, we use this uh, partnerships, this project with the universities to also have a more like a, a broader goal of uh, projects and also more people working together and collaborating together to reach our uh, goals and uh, fostering the, the research in the whole UAE as well. Um, okay, so within the SSRC, we have uh, those three main areas, I would say that uh, mostly uh, or and the majority, the big majority of our partnerships, our research projects, uh, our development projects is spans during those uh, three main areas. Uh, so from the left side uh, of the, the slide, so we have the Zero Trust Secure Autonomous uh, UAS systems. That is basically uh, the use case for this area will be UAVs, drones, swarm of drones, basically. Uh, we have in the middle the secure communications that uh, our bigger project in this area is regarding the mesh network, how to improve the security of mesh-based mesh networks. And uh, you can see in the bottom of this, this middle part that we have this kind of a mesh shield or secure mesh shield that enables those, uh, those technologies that we have been working on in this string. 
And in the right side here, we have the secure technologies. That is the group that I'm part that I'm participate inside the SSRC. And the, basically, the secure technologies uh, have different focus in enhanced security, both in software and hardware. And those projects from secure, uh, secure technologies can be applied either in the drones or in the mesh communicators, uh, secure communications that we have. So basically, these secure technologies goes for kind of all of our internal projects because it will deal with the, the security in different layers. Uh, so uh, I will not go into details for everyone, every project that we have, but I will focus on two of them uh, just for you to understand uh, a bit of uh, our current projects and how the SL4 fits on those ones. So first, talking about the secure autonomous, I will just uh, explode that, that image for you to, to understand better. So this is our kind of uh, architecture, our, uh, like broader view, uh, higher level view of the architecture in which we have our fog UAVs or frog drones, and then our edge uh, UAVs, edge drones, and those comprise the swarm of drones that we, we can have. And uh, you can see that those guys are communicating through that uh, secure mesh that is related to the, our other projects as well. So you're gonna see that, uh, you're gonna realize that all of our projects or use cases, they at some time, they, they converge for, for some solutions. Uh, so in this, in this case, we have in the left side, the flight and mission operations that will receive data from the drones, uh, mission data, telemetry data, and also uh, will act over the, the drones. And uh, here in the right side, we have this uh, flight controller that uh, it's what is inside, let's say, of the, the fog UAV. And the, basically the flight controller, it has the flight, uh, the flight computer, sorry. It has the flight controller and the mission computer. So basically the flight controller is supposed to control the flight or the, the directions, the GPS, for example, uh, that the drone will uh, perform. And uh, the mission computer is the actual tasks that that drone will perform or the service that the, that drone will provide during its flight. So this is basically the, the architecture. And uh, I would like to highlight this blue box that is the flight controller. Uh, and actually we have this, uh, our own or like in-house flight controller and the name is Saluki, one Arab Arabic name. Uh, and basically we use this as, a, it is a of, um, commercial off-the-shelf uh, Polar Fire, the RISC-V SOC, that we use for this uh, flight controller. Uh, in the left side you can see the first version that we had, then it got evolving time to time. And uh, now we have uh, also the light mission computer or the, the mission com uh, computer uh, together with this flight controller. So it gets evolving time to time, keeping the RISC-V SOC. Uh, and then for the latest versions for the mission computer, we are using ARM uh, boards, mainly NVIDIA. And uh, then those, this Saluki, the evolution of the Saluki, it also uses the mesh network that we have uh, implemented. Uh, so the SCL4 appears in this uh, Saluki because we have uh, some project that works with uh, TE on uh, SCL4 on RISC-V that uh, I will talk in more detail tomorrow in, in my talk, but uh, basically one scenario of application for this uh, SL4TE is uh, in these uh, flight controller devices that we have, these uh, Salukis that, uh, that we have. Uh, now moving to the secure technologies, that is the, the specific group that I make part, so uh, I have a bit of more details to talk about. And uh, basically we have uh, this definition of a GAF framework in this uh, in the secure technologies. Another Arabic uh, word, uh, the GAF is basically stand out for uh, the, the, what, what means GAF, it's a tree, uh, a national tree from the United Arab Emirates. And the, basically this tree is known by growing in the middle of the desert, so being resilient. And then this is the significance that uh, we bring with GAF for the name of this, this framework. 
So, uh, basically, GAF is uh, the idea of GAF is to provide an edge device software architecture. Uh, the definition of one broader architecture, I would say, that the GAF framework is. And uh, its idea is to provide modularity, scalability, also foster the research and development so we can use this framework, this architecture in different manners and also with a low maintenance effort. So this figure, another block figure, uh, but uh, this, this figure shows the, the GAF framework as a whole. So basically we have this framework that uh, we define that we're going to have a layer for virtualization, different VMs, uh, different VMs for different scenarios, but this one is the generic view of the GAF framework. So we can deploy, and we have been deploying in different use cases, different versions of this whole architecture. Let's say that for some specific scenarios, we don't need all of those VMs. You can have just uh, some of those VMs. But uh, the idea of GAF framework is to define this whole uh, spectrum of possibilities. And then for different uh, uh, architectures, for let's say for x86 or for ARM or for RISC-V, we can deploy this framework in different manners, uh, let's say. And then uh, SL4 also takes part in this uh, GAF framework because, for example, the work that Marco presented, my colleague Marco presented yesterday on the virtualization, it comprises some solutions for ARM uh, and then you can imagine this uh, GAF framework being, uh, like say, deployed on the ARM uh, platform and for the specific ARM platform we use uh, SCL4 on the virtualization layer. So this is just like the broader view because we have like different uh, use cases, different scenarios, but we can apply in different ways. And uh, so, yeah, this, this figure just sh shows again the GAF architecture and the different uh, uh, devices that we can apply for laptops, drones, uh, the communicator devices as the, the mesh router, for example. So just to name, to name, to name a few. And uh, yeah, I invite you to find out more about GAF. We have like, it is uh, available on GitHub, in the TII way GitHub. And also we have like some... Uh, white paper uh, about GAF and defining this whole architecture that I present to you, but in a bit more details and some applications in different architectures, uh, different platforms uh, as well. And just to, to finalize, to wrap up, I will talk a bit about uh, the SL4 efforts in more details that we have been doing. So, uh, as I said, we are, have been using for longer period of time SL4 as a hypervisor. So, uh, my colleague presented yesterday. You are welcome to to see to talk with us, talk with Mark or, or, or with me about the the latest developments of uh, SL4 as a hypervisor. But basically, uh, we are uh, using the ARM uh, platform for our deliverables in using SL4 as a hypervisor, and uh, we have been doing some pull requests to the SL4 mainline as well, contributing to the the community. Uh, it is fully open source also, so the, you, can, you can check it out. And uh, we are also, in, this is a more early project. We started uh, a few months ago, uh, SL4 using as a OS. And uh, for this case, we are using as a trust execution environment on the RISC-V uh, Polar Fire. And for this specific project, I will have my talk tomorrow, so I can show more detail, details to you tomorrow. And uh, those guys, as I said, even the hypervisor or the, the, the OS, have, we have been using different uh, uh, projects. And uh, for example, as I mentioned to you in the Saluki, we have SL4 as an OS. For the uh, Raspberry Pi, we have been using SL4 as a hypervisor. So in different ways. And I also uh, invited you to find out more about our latest developments on the, the SCL4 with the, the link for our uh, virtualization solution or for the latest developments of virtualization. And also we have been publishing some papers regarding SL4 in different uh, use cases that we have inside uh, TII. So that's it that I have to talk to you today. Thank you. Thank you very much. So again, time for a quick question before we wrap up. Anyone? 
I'll have a quick one. So I've just talked about explaining what the work we do to family and friends, but there is some, sometimes a similar experience trying to explain a CL4 to your managers or decision makers or investors. So what was the key component that helped you convince your organization or your team to convince your organization to go towards a CL4 in terms of value proposition for a CL4? Yeah, if I could mention just uh, one point, the one that stands out when we enter in those discussions is the small TCB. It's the biggest point that okay. we talk about. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, well, let's thank Everton again. <laughs>